Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. I want to start this week by finishing off the stepping stone and to do that I'm going to use a little bit of this blue mirrored glass and this green. So let me get started. <laughs> stepping stone this week but I think I'm gonna go ahead and wait until I have the whole series finished and then I'll just grout them all together that's all right I have a new project it is this butterfly I bought the base at Joanne fabrics and crafts store and I have already put the hanging hardware on there and it's sticking through to the front because I'm gonna cover it with epoxy so I don't care if it sticks up but I wanted to do it before I put the epoxy on just so that it would be more secure and the thing that's going to be different about this one is that I have some gems that someone gave me that are plastic and they were in this package. They came from Fire Mountain Gems. So I don't usually use plastic and I also have some of these beads. These are plastic beads from Dollar Tree and I also have some glass beads from Dollar Tree. And my daughter is challenging me to do a project using the plastic because I wasn't sure what to do with it. I hate to throw things away, but that's just not what I use. I use glass. So I said, sure, I will do a project with them. And so I'm going to do this butterfly. Now, the thing about plastic is it's, it's not glass for one. It can scratch and get ruined. And so I don't want to grout this. And so this butterfly is a good project. It's going to be indoors, so it will be protected. And if it's hanging on a wall, hopefully it won't get scratched. And if I don't grout it, it won't get scratched. But there is one thing about this plastic is sometimes the piece have a little piece sticking out, like right here on the edge. And I want to either cut that off or just make sure it doesn't show. Because I'm not grouting them, uh, some of these pieces are going to be just sitting on top. And I, I don't want that piece of plastic to show them. So I have to kind of take care with the ones that I use. But I'm going to get started. I'm going to be using weld bond glue for some of it. And I'm going to be using epoxy sculpt for some of these recessed areas. I also do have some pretty beads I'll be using over here. And these glass beads really aren't too bad. I think sometimes these glass pearls are painted and the paint can come off when you grout, so I don't like to grout these anyway. So this is another good project for this type of bead. Anyway, let me get after it.
gonna use epoxy sculpt and put some glass and beads, but I want a unique piece for the head. So I have these jewelry findings that were donated to me. And I think, I think I'm gonna use this one for the head. It, uh, it fits in there around the screw nicely and uh, it's unique. So that's the one I'm gonna use. it I'm gonna let the epoxy set up on the body and I'll be spraying it with a sealer to secure the beads hundred percent but I feel like it needs more color the, the color is pretty far apart like when I make a mosaic I don't leave such big grout spaces so even though some of these are still gonna be big I think I'm gonna add some beads in some of these other areas some more beads around the edges I'm gonna use E6000 show up close how my glue wasn't completely neat. There's E6000 in some places. There's some dried weld bond in some places that's a little bit shinier. So that's another reason that I want to spray it all over with this Rust-Oleum Gloss Clear just to give it a nice gloss finish so that the unevenness isn't there. Right, so I have finished making this butterfly and the conclusion is I don't love it. I like it. It's okay, but it's just not what I really love doing. And I think the problem is that these plastic pieces, I just could not get out of my head that they're plastic. So I will be donating these to my little niece so she can use them in craft projects and these as well. So I don't have to look at them and I'm not tempted to use them and I won't use them again, but it came out okay. It's not a total loss. I have to say that not every project can be a complete win. This one was a little bit of a miss, but you gotta keep trucking. So onward to my next project. And my next project is back to the sunflowers. I wanna work on all the leaves and foliage and get that all finished. I really don't have a reference photo because I sort of just drew in the leaves where I wanted them, but some of the more prominent ones will probably have some highlighted uh, lighter areas. The ones that are in the background will probably be darker and I'll sort of handle it that way. And I might even add more leaves. We'll see as I get going. Let me get after it.
good start on the leaves on this side of the project. And I've been adding blues in as I go to the darkest areas, really. I have quite a bit to do in the middle there, but I wanna show you how I'm cutting them out. A little bit different than the petals. So I take a piece of clear contact paper from the roll. I peel it off. I put it over the leaf in question. And then I don't trace the whole thing. I'm just going to do part of it. I found that just doing part of it works the best. And I trace over what I've got here. And this is just a loose sketch of the leaf with the segments. All right, I guess I could go ahead and do the other side. So I look at something like this where I have the line drawn up here, and that's kind of silly. If I cut this piece, I'm going to cut it to here, to the point. So I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. That's good. Then even though I drew that part, I'm only going to cut out part of it. And these leaves are pretty much front and center, so they're gonna be pretty bright. They're not gonna be as dark as some of the other ones that I've made. It's gonna have the bright blue sky behind it, so I want it to really pop. take this to my cutting All right, tape. So here's my leaf that I've just cut out and I pretty much want the streaking on the glass to go the same way as the lines that I've drawn here. So I've got some light, some dark, and some medium and I'm going to start the base with some of the medium that I'm going to move to light and then I'm going to move back to medium on this leaf. So what I do is I really just want maybe two of these. So I'm going to cut this out first. I'm going to pop this. I guess I can pop it right here. Go ahead and cut the whole thing out. And then I just score along the edge of my piece. Oh, that's way too far off. Let's see. And then I score again, this time through the plastic. And then I score along the edge of the other side of my cutout. And I just break all the score lines. And I can, if it's off a little bit, like this, I take my nippers with the plastic still on there and just nip around till it fits where the line is. I don't want them to sit so close that there's no grout line. I want a little bit of a space there. So sometimes I nip the edge just to make that space. You know, you could cut it out so that there is that gap, which is what they do for stained glass work. And I have some scissors that do that, but I don't really want to mess with that now. So back at my mosaic, I check the fit of these pieces. Oops, it looks pretty good, but like I said, I like to have a bit of a gap. So I'm going to go ahead and nip the edges through the plastic. And I'm gonna nip this edge too, so it's more on the line.
Okay, now I think that this piece is too big, so I'm going to cut that one. And what I usually do is I cut it at an angle because I don't want too many right angles. There's no right angles in nature, so I cut it at a little bit of an angle. And sometimes I'll even nip that so that there's no uh, visible gap. In between. Then I peel off the shelf paper and glue my pieces down with weld bond. Now on some of these, I might do it on this one. I have put a bit of a, the vein a little bit darker. So I have used an additional glass piece in the middle in some areas just to show the vein that's going down the main part of the leaf. And that's it. progress on the leaves this week. That's quite a bit of mosaic for me to do, especially when I'm off going to bead shows. But I'm going to turn my camera off. I think you guys get the idea of how I make the leaves, and I'm going to try to work on this fiddly part that's in the middle. And I'll update you when I'm done. Clearly, I need to work on cleaning off my table, but the sunflowers are looking great. I have to say, when they were on my table and I was looking at them at an angle because they're more flat. The composition seems so tight. And now that it's up, it seems a lot more loose. I'll be adding on the light blues behind there and it's gonna seem a lot more free, I guess, which is what I'm going for. I can't wait to add that sky and give it some more energy up there. Woo! That's putting it together. Thanks for watching. See you next time.